guest is a mountain biker with over 1 million subscribers on YouTube. He'll teach you how to ride your bike, crash your bike, fix your bike, and hack your bike. Once a web developer from Florida, he lives in North Carolina sharing his passion for two wheels with the world. You know him as Seth's Bike Hacks, the hacker man himself, Seth Alvo. How are you? I couldn't be better, I'm a whistler. This is my third time. First Crankworks though. First Crankworks, yeah, for sure. And how is it rating on your expectations so far? It's way better than I thought it was gonna be. I actually got to do a heli drop yesterday. It was my first my first heli drop, my first time in a helicopter period. You know, I've been in an airplane a million times and it's all it's all shaky and it's vibrating everything and the helicopter was so smooth, it was just like yeah, we just went up, it was like five minutes, and then it landed like up in high alpine. You wait for the rest of the crew to come over and just bomb the mountain all day, and it's just beautiful and amazing. Last year when we rode Bellingham, you I remember you told us the story, you got recognized at Whole Foods that morning by a cashier. <laughs> yeah. Have you had any weird fat encounters since? Oh yeah, I was coming out of the customs at Vancouver Airport last time I was here, and there was somebody like, you know, in the customs area that recognized me. But what was weird is it seemed like they were waiting there for me, because it was when you come out, and there's just kind of people waiting for their family, and there was just somebody like kind of just standing there, like this kid with his mom, and he's like, it's Seth, Seth! <laughs> and I was like, what's up, dude? In mountain biking, we're so blessed to have these videos with super high production value, but some people overlook that it's just the story that really keeps people intrigued and keeps people watching. So how does that play an effect on the videos that you produce and the production that you put into your videos? So I always plan my trips and plan my projects around being nimble. I find that the story really comes together in the editing room. But if you don't have the shots, then you can't tell it. So I get as much footage as I can in the easiest way I know how always have the camera rolling, and then once I'm in the editing room, I figure out what the story is gonna be. You can take that footage and you can make it into 10 different stories, um, but you have to find the story that's gonna be the most interesting. So your house is a very prominent character on your channel. Always upgrading, always changing things from inside out. Uh, you have trails in the backyard. Showing your house so much on the internet, do you ever have unwanted guests? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, my I'm already trying to figure out where I'm gonna move. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's, I have a sign on my door that sort of explains it. It's like, in the nicest terms possible. Like, it's almost like a Canadian wrote it. It's, you off, eh? yeah, yeah, it's like, <laughs> it's basically like, it's not cool for you to be here, you know, and it's got my little logo on there so they know they're in the right place and they're not supposed to be there. I did have somebody ring my doorbell, but he pretended he didn't know who he wa I was. And then he wanted to talk to me about mountain biking. <laughs> and he like walked up there in the rain and it was like, like, dude. So when you make videos, you often find yourselves riding other people's trails, possibly illegal trails. Uh, you must encounter people who are upset because they feel like uh, you're spoiling their spot. But you know, in in our line of work, we have there's a fine line of wanting to share what we do. Earlier on, I had been to a lot of people's trails, and when you meet the locals, sometimes they're really excited to show you their trails, and they want to blow up their trails, but there are varying attitudes. You go other places and they're like, oh great, you're gonna put this on YouTube? Like this is our spot. Illegal trails, I just try to stay away from in general. But even if it's a, a legal trail, I wanna respect the locals and I try to do everything I can and all the research I can to see whether or not I can show it. I've switched to doing a lot of stuff in my backyard, a lot of stuff at private bike parks and a lot of stuff in my garage. But. There are some trail systems that are low key and they should remain low key. The locals feel that way and I agree with them. How has this whole thing um, affected your life in terms of your social circles? You know, we see you have great relationships and that some of those people are in your videos and you know, you're just living the dream with some of your best friends. The only new friends that I've made since I started doing the YouTube channel, they're either on YouTube or they're in the industry. And some of them are on YouTube channels completely unrelated to what I do. So it's actually been somewhat lonely. Uh, I don't make friends in the same way that I used to. Now, if somebody recognizes me and they know me from my channel, we're already in different situations where they know who I am and they feel like they know me and I have no idea who they are. 
And sometimes you can break past that, and I have. I've made friends that knew me from the channel, and now we're like total equals, and, and everything's cool. But I don't like people treating me like I'm special. A lot of times I'll go to bike parks, and, and I'll insist on paying for my lift ticket. I'll, I'll go to bike shops, and I'll insist on not getting a discount. I, I don't want people to treat me special. Unless I'm trying to gain access to something, then, it, then it's kind of nice. <laughs> when you look back in your videos a year ago, you're riding it, or two years ago, you're riding a Trek hardtail in Florida. Now you're riding a carbon trail bike in North Carolina. Has your audience grown with you, or is no new people coming in? I think there are a lot of people that started watching me when they were beginners, and now they're entering races and stuff and spending all their income on, on mountain bikes. Uh, but. I hope to have held on to the people that are just starting out and are beginners. I don't want to intimidate those people and uh, after the riding season, when I have time to focus on the goofier stuff and spend time in my garage, I want to make sure I make content for those people, the people that originally started for the channel because they're, they're the new mountain bikers that I'm going to help bring in. Would you consider yourself a workaholic? I wouldn't consider myself a workaholic, but a lot of people I know consider me a workaholic. And that's probably because I'm a workaholic. I think people are happiest when they're doing what they're best at and what they're the most passionate about. But most people don't have the luxury of doing that. So I think most workaholics, whether they own their own business, whether they've just fallen into a line of work they really like, they feel like they have to be there. They feel like they have a duty that they have to accomplish. And they're super lucky to, to be there and they don't take it for granted. So tell us, if you had to only eat at one taco place for the rest of your life, where would that be? That's a really good question. There's this place in South Florida, and it is in the seediest strip center you've ever seen. And there's this amazing taco place in there, and I'm trying to remember. I think it's called Agave Azul or Agave or, or something like that. I don't know, I just call it the taco place. <laughs> I would eat at that taco place over and over again. That would just be the only one I go to, hands down. Do you love tacos more than you love bikes? It depends on how hungry I am. <laughs> <laughs> you can't eat a bike. Yeah, you can't, a bike's not gonna fill your stomach. I wouldn't say that tacos are my favorite food, but when I'm done riding for the day and I'm all sweaty and dirty, and I need some place that I can go in casually, be able to sit there and look out the window and keep an eye on my bike, and just eat something that's just barbaric. I think that you'll always find those types of foods at a taco place. If you could create a Seth's Bike Hacks starter kit, what would you put in it? The Seth's Bike Hacks starter kit would have some kind of multi-tool in it that does a lot of things, like a Leatherman, crap loads of zip ties, like the biggest pack of like assorted zip ties you could ever have. Probably some electrical tape, a GoPro, and various GoPro mounts. And then you're gonna come out with the Pro Kit Plus next year. Pro Kit Plus is, yeah. We're gonna do something insignificant to the zip ties that doesn't make them cost more, but we can charge more for. Like some golden zip ties or something like that. And we'll, we'll charge about $200 more for it. <laughs> can you uh, explain this photo? That happened at Whistler. I just slipped a pedal and my knee pad had shifted up and the pedal just went right into my, my uh, shin and I rode back down to the bottom. I went to eat dinner and then I looked down and I was like, oh, well, that escalated quickly. It's like the size of a hard boiled egg. What the heck's going on here? So that is my dog. My dog's not, not very active. He likes, to, he likes his treats. He likes to sit on the couch. And in that video, I wanted to make him a trail dog. I wanted him to chase me through the trails. When that didn't work, I thought, when's the only time that drama goes into full dog mode? And it's when you're sweeping. If you're sweeping <laughs> something, he just tries to kill the broom. He tries to bite it. He'll follow it wherever it is. So I took, uh, I took the broom, towed it behind me on my bike, and he went running. What can you tell me about this and other uh, instances like this? I show my falls and I'm not afraid to. That's when somebody falls or when I fall, that's golden content. That's a guaranteed positive reaction from the audience. I'm not gonna waste that. I would like to say that maybe the channel has pressured me to take more risks, but that, it's not really the case. I've always, I've always just tried to push myself on my bike and do things above my ability and just try things that are uh, sketchy. Oh, 
All right, we're gonna play a quick game here where we fill in the blanks. Uh, all of the blanks are at the end of the uh, short expression, so we're gonna put on a timer for 30 seconds. We'll see how many you can get. Three, two, one, go. Shred the. Gnar. No dig, no. Ride. Live free, ride hard. Get stoked. Smee. Gull. Smee. Gull. Ash. Nord's got. You can say pass. Pass. Ferda. Girls. Drop two. Pass. Sandor B. Pass. Mahalo. My dude. Samurai pizza. Cat. Ride don't. And... Oh! <laughs> I knew I was going to do bad on that. How did you not get smashed? Oh. <laughs> would you like to spin the wheel? I would love to spin the wheel. We got a red slice of doom open for our guests. Anything can go on it. Be creative. You can put a trail. If you got something maybe else on your mind, who knows? Maybe you'll get lucky. Maybe we're going to go to South Florida at the taco place. Oh no. Oh god, no. Oh, oh my no. god. <laughs> Oh god, that's an easy get, one. We're gonna get shunned. <laughs> oh god, I hope it doesn't land on that. Should I uh, give her right. a spin? Give it a Be spin. Be gentle on her. I hope to god it doesn't explode. Oh god. Holy crap. Now that I see this spinning, it, I, I have more respect for the machine. It makes the best noise. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're good. Oh god, oh, no! God. Oh god, no! <laughs> Angry, Angry Pirate! Angry Pirate! There you go. <laughs> All right. Want to go for a ride? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. I mean, this is the most, this is the most amount of reds that I've seen in four feet from each other. Hey, hey man, what's up? I love your channel, man. Oh, thank you. Oh, mahalo. Mahalo, my dude. Yo, give me, give me some, give me some. Can I take a picture? Yeah, for sure, man. Thank you. Ready? Yeah. They close off the second half. Awesome. All right, let's make our way through there. Oh, are we at the drop to hip for Dirt Merchant? Have you been here yet, Seth? To this? No. Yeah. This is Dirt Merchant. This is Dirt Merchant, but this wasn't here. No, this is new. Feel like sending it? Probably be down. Uh, if I can follow one of you guys in. Seth. Hey, what's up? Oh, good, man. Thank you. This will be the biggest drop I've done. Hell yeah, Hell yeah dude. It, yeah, definitely. <laughs> oh, that was butter. Yeah, yeah. buddy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Holy <laughs> shit, man. That Is wasn't it? even scary. No, it's fun. Oh my god. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, buddy, that was sick. What the heck? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Count. So we have some fan questions. Okay. We'll just, we got like six of them. We'll just go through them real quick and we'll continue our ride to the bottom. All right. So what do you wipe with in the woods? Some shit kits. Favorite trail in Whistler? Technoa. From one to ten, how saggy is your suspension? I'd say about seven. Worst injury while starting out biking? A separated shoulder. What's the gnarliest trail you've ever ridden? Horse face at Windrock. Hands down. How much sauce is too much sauce? When the pot's overflowing. Well done, my man. Well done. <laughs>